If things need to change in Fiji in terms of how the two major uh, ethnic communities live together and work together, we need to begin to start to think about how you can develop a new generation of people because it's very difficult to change adults' uh, uh, perspectives, their views on, on this particular issue. It might be easier to work with, uh, with young people. Opportunities have to be created at all levels, from the children, the youth, and the elders. Eh? If you're able to convince the youth and the children, then it will be a, a sustainable approach. And I was very lucky to have gone to a, a multiracial school uh, where I sort of learned about multiracialism and how we need to uh, live together and work together. And, and that's been a very solid foundation for me. In February 2016, a group of young people from the two major ethnic groups in Fiji, residing in the Tailevu and Naitasiri provinces, came together for a workshop to discuss and begin to learn, share and understand each other better, and find ways to better work in collaboration. These two provinces have had records of ethnic conflicts. Bringing these young people together to actually start to discuss and to learn from each other, understand each other from that, uh, from that uh, perspective uh, is, a, is a good strategic way forward to uh, thinking about the bigger issues that exist um, in Fiji in terms of race uh, relations and multiculturalism. I thought that I knew a lot, but in reality it was very little. <laughs> So we were living like side by side with each other, but we had very little knowledge like about each other. So uh, after this workshop, I came to know a lot about the Itoke uh, brothers and sisters. The uh, workshop was very effective because in that workshop, we are able to be given a uh, safe space where we could voice out our opinion about uh, the other Indo-Fijian race that we had the workshop with. It's uh, an eye-opening for us because uh, most of us have been living with this uh, Indo community right beside us when we are not aware of their culture and their traditions that they observe. And uh, there are things that we take for granted which they value and the things that we value and uh, they're really envious about it. For me personally, I've never, like, you know, stayed with the Itokes like that, you know, to interact with them. You know, left alone on some place and then to live with them, to learn with them for like uh, living away from family for like a week or so. So it was amazing, a great experience I would say. When you want to know deeper into someone, you have to go back to his root. You have to understand him quite uh, a lot. You have to talk to him. We have to allow him or her to come to your place. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think this, uh, this will take time to go. As the workshop progressed, personal defences fell away, barriers were broken and trust began to develop. I have a son as well who went into the workshop. He was very personal with uh, what happened. Uh, he said, uh, well, Dad, uh, this workshop is supposed to be carried out with uh, more of the youths. Like, we have been seeing each other, we thought that we knew each other, but little did we know that the the our Indo Fijians, uh, they have plenty of things to say. They also have uh, uh, plenty of things that they want to know, but they don't have that uh, courage to come forward. They don't know the channels to follow. They they cannot. Uh, uh, they, they they have fear as well. Uh, uh, yes, that uh, sharing from my son experiences. I very strongly feel that our youths have um, a lot of potential uh, to be able to do peace building work, um, work of harmony, building relationships. And we always hear so many times people say that uh, the youths are our leaders for tomorrow. So if we wish to have good leaders, uh, to lead the country, lead the people, lead their families. We need to contribute towards this building these youths uh, from a young age so that they are built 
uh, with values, values where they're coming from, their cultural values, and also their religious values, the beliefs they have. So that that becomes a very major contribution in their lives that their leadership is built on those values. While different ethnic groups have lived side by side in Fiji for many years, there have been very little serious attempts to gain a better and deeper understanding and respect of each other's culture and traditions and discrimination along racial lines based on stereotypical misconceptions continue to prevail. Neither one of the two major races have uh, thought it fit that it's be, why can't we come to learn the other races' issues? Why can't we accept their, uh, um, their, their, their shortcomings? Why can't we even learn the language to start off with? Uh, you, you, go to, you go in the rural areas, and I must give, here I must give more credit to the Itokes. You find a lot of Itoke people are able to speak at least Hindi and able to communicate. But it's said that the, 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 the Indian community has not gone. <laughs> Chinese have a very long history, uh, and you're talking about integration, I think they were the first people to have had, through the commercial uh, activities, had uh, contacts and establishments throughout Fiji, you know, and uh, that sort of made us integrate much quicker uh, with the local population. In fact, as you know, many of the uh, the, 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 the pioneers intermarried. And those days, and I'm talking about well, 45, 50 years ago, you know, you, if you walked in the street with uh, being a, a young Indian man with an Itoke girl hand in hand, it was a big, 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 big risk. It was a big risk because you were putting your life on the line with the, you know, with the Wafis or anybody else who met you in the street. So, but, you know, it was very different then. Today it's not. The young people don't care. I, mean, I, I met some people today, uh, you know, you know women think that we're ring, and they're saying they don't care who they marry. They want to marry to be happy. They don't want to marry because it's religiously right, it's culturally right, it's socially right. And, 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 and I, I, I think we are really moving in that direction. But all I'm saying is the elders, the leaders, the, uh, the teachers, they have to brace themselves for the change that this is going to happen. The barriers exist at all levels. Eh? the children's level, and the youth level, and the elders or the old people levels. Barriers exist. Eh? Um, although they come together, but it's limited. Eh? If the opportunity for them is created for them to come and express themselves freely, without hesitations, without holding back, eh? then you should be able to understand. Eh? other people's culture and traditions. I feel that we need to move out from our own churches, um, our very comfort zones, um, towards the other churches, ecumenical um, understanding, and not only ecumenical, but also reaching out to other faith denominations, interfaith aspect, uh, working with the Hindus, working with the Islam and other many denominations that is in the country. Uh, that peace building can be done collectively in that way. Uh, we can do, our churches can do, but we cannot do everything. So we need the help and uh, we need to journey with the other people of other faith denominations to be able to collectively get engaged in the peace building work. A practice of love, of care, respect and understanding being taught by the church. When it comes to the practice part, uh, we, uh, we, we, we see a, uh, it's a different approach. Eh? As demonstrated in the workshop, youths in Fiji today can play an important and vital role in being part of the process of nation building. They bring diversity of what it means to be Fijian. They are more tolerant and accepting of the differences that exist and tend to have a more honest approach to cross-cultural engagement than their elders.
I think you'll find that 90% or 85% of the young people are very willing to know about each other. So there's already that mind block that was there has been lifted. They are willing to learn. If the environments are surrounding them, if the people surrounding them, including elders and, 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 and those who are in power who make these things to be facilitated, uh, accept and, 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 and are in harmony with their thought. More people should be like uh, taking part in uh learning about uh, other people and people from other ethnic backgrounds so that we can help together uh, prevent the issue of uh, hatred, grudges, discrimination uh, amongst, our, uh, amongst each other and uh, we can move together as a peaceful nation. Well, you see, there, there was that old saying that says the youth of today are leaders of tomorrow. So after this uh, workshop that we did, we came to realize that to build a better Fiji, it is better for us to know about the other culture and get to really know them so that we can work together. Because uh, you cannot just go in and uh, walk your way into another culture without actually knowing what their taboos are, what their norms are. So after the workshop uh, about the uh, youths to be leaders of tomorrow, we really need to work together. The youth are a very important component of uh, any programs that, that we do. And uh, we, a person like me, I came from the Chinese youth. Chini Sido, she came from the Chinese youth. So we, we do our training and our personal development and our community development through an apprenticeship through the youth. And we develop from there. Maybe it's time that I thank the United Nations, NDP, for coming up with uh, uh, that good idea. Uh, for youths to come together in partnership in trying to interact, integrate, collaborate with uh, each other, uh, uh, especially the big races in Fiji. While most people are comfortable with their ethnic identity, there hasn't been a national identity. Until recently, when the Fijian government legislated that all citizens of Fiji be called Fijian. While this has received mixed reactions, it is, however, a positive move for all people born and bred in Fiji to have a national identity. Being called Fijians, though personally I wasn't comfortable with it for some time, uh, but then I tried to look beyond myself to, the, to Fiji as a whole and coming generations, because uh, our generations who are children now or young population, they will grow with this understanding that they are all Fijians. So looking, um, you know, for the future, I was able to accept that, um, thinking in mind that not only for myself, but Fiji as a whole and our coming generations. So at least we won't have um, the divisions that we have been facing from 1987. We've now called ourselves uh, in Fiji, we are now called all Fijians. Uh, but what does that really mean? Have we actually talked about this uh, um, in our communities, for the people in the rural areas, uh, in the churches? What does it mean to become Fijian? If we have to become one people united, these are the kind of things that we need to be discussing about in order to move forward together as a country.